Hi, welcome to Education Matters, a program where we explore some of the education issues in New Jersey. I'm very excited today because we're going to be looking at the arts and STEM, and we'll get it all into that. My guest is Sean Alongo. Uh, Sean is the Sussex County Teacher of the Year in the District of Apacon. Uh, so welcome, Shauna. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me today, Ray. It's a oh, fun it's great to have you. And uh, first of all, tell us a little bit about your, your school and your district of Apacon for those people who are in maybe South Jersey and they're not really sure. So we are a small district. We are K-12 um, district on Lake Copacon, if you don't know, the largest lake in man-made lake in New Jersey. Um, and so we are at the southernmost tip of Sussex County, kind of on the border of Morris County. Um, we, I teach in Durban Avenue School which is preschool through first grade only. We have four schools in district. Um, Durban Avenue is pre-K through one. We have Tulsa Trail School, which is grades two and three. Our middle school is four through seven. And then our high school is grades eight through 12. Um, and so I've been teaching for 21 years. Uh, this is, I just moved down to what I call little land um, here. This is my third year um, and I love it. I'm so, so happy and enjoy working with these little, little kids every day. All right, you're in elementary school, but you do have an interesting background. I think you're also a school board member, but you've taught at different grade levels. So tell us a little bit about the different grade levels and where you're a board member. So I am on the Board of Education in Morris Plains, New Jersey, which is in Morris County. It's right outside Morristown for those that may know Morristown, but not know the little little quaint town of Morris Plains. It is a K, that's a K to eight district. Um, we've we send our high school kids to Morristown High School. Um, and I, I've taught everything from Head Start through grade 12 in music. I've done general music. I've did music technology um, focused. I've done band, orchestra, marching band, jazz band, choir. I've directed the musicals. You name it, I've kind of worn that hat. I have a lot of hats that I wear. Um, you know, currently I am the music teacher here at Durban Avenue School, but then I also serve as an arts integration STEAM specialist within the school, um, which is gonna lead into our conversation today. Um, and I wear the school board hat. And I also coach for the Institute for Arts Integration and STEAM in their certification program, which I completed a number of years ago. And they kept me on as a coach to coach teachers all around the world from literally the Bush of Alaska to Belgium. Um, in how to become a spe an arts integration STEAM specialist. Okay, and I love that integration. I think it's so so important, it's innovative. Um, how do those different hats, because I'm amazed you have all those different, you've been in a lot of different things. Th does that help drive uh, your instruction? Because now you, you're kind of sending your students up to the where you used to be, and you're also a board member, so you look at it from a different perspective. Does that help you? Absolutely. I mean, and I also, I didn't mention, I was also an administrator for a bit of time. And so I, I really am grateful for all of the experiences and the broad kind of outlook I have on education. And, you know, I'm a mom too. I have a 10 year old son, so I can take my teacher hat, my former administrator hat, my board member hat, my mom hat, and use that to help drive my instructional practice and how I work with my students and what what I see and I can take my experiences as a teacher. And that was part of what brought me down to pre-K to one um, was that I had been teaching middle school music tech for like nine, 10 years. And I, I was feeling a change and I got asked to make this move to kind of build that foundation, give those, give the kids a really solid foundation in music and all of the arts and work with the teachers to get the arts integration going, to hope to then have it kind of follow through because I know where they need to go. So if I can start building it at the bottom, I can help my colleagues as the kids go their journey through the school system. That's great. That's great. I think a lot of people do the opposite. They they they, they usually go from the elementary up to the the high school, and I, and I actually think there's a lot to be said for move, going in the opposite direction. Well, it's funny. I started out high school, and then I did elementary, and then I I did I mean like literally like 16 years secondary, middle school, high school focused, and then to jump to like the youngest children. It was a huge jump, um, but you know, when your mind's in the right place and, and you have that purpose, um, and I feel like a Pied Piper every day, you know, like it's wonderful to sing and dance and, and, and provide them with experiences that really broaden their horizons and make learning come alive. Not only in my classroom, but the work I do 
pushing into the classroom teachers. Yeah, let's get into that because uh, you're a music teacher, but we're going to be spending a lot of time talking about STEM. Yeah. So for a lot of people, that's like, well, uh, how do they connect and why are we connecting them? And so we'll, you know, give an example. Why is it that important and what's the connection? So the connection is through the processes. Um, you know, I when I had when I taught middle school general music, music technology, um, I really focused and built that program um, to bring in and I, all of the STEM content areas through music. And so I felt it, I've always felt it was really important, not only to focus on the social emotional needs of our students, but also to make as many connections as possible. Music is my vehicle to teach children, to give them a love of learning. And so I feel like the more we can connect our material across contents, the more it comes alive for them. The more they see the, the why, the how, what, what impacts other things and how it looks in the real world versus like in a book or an isolated content, they can see how our world is not, we, we don't live in silos, things interact with each other. And so through bringing the arts into STEM, you provide an opportunity to add another layer of like that impact of the students really viewing it through a different lens. Yeah, uh, you're getting me enthused. Um, so let's uh, give me a couple of examples of how that you uh, integrate, you know, the, the music and the arts into the science and mathematics and all that. So, you know, I, I just did a project a couple of weeks ago with my kids. And so at the younger levels, it's, it's, it's kind of basic. What can you pull in? And for me, it's all about finding natural connections. What, what material are they working on in their classroom? And how can that, how does that authentically exist in music or, or substitute that for in visual arts or in dance or in theater? Where does it automatically happen? You're not trying to like force anything. And I think that's what people feel like, oh, forcing the arts in to advocate for them. No, no, no. It's where do those natural connections happen? So I did a lesson um, on the shapes of guitars. And so the students were creating guitars, we looked at different electric guitars and acoustic guitars and what are they made of and what are the different parts of them? And they got to design electric guitars using shapes. So we're pulling in that music side of the instruments and what are they composed of? And then they're learning about shapes in their classrooms, three-dimensional, two-dimensional shapes, and how can we use them to be a part of the design process? And how, we're, how do they impact the instrument and how it makes sound? Um, and then along those lines, I did another one. I, I, one of my big units is on like timbre, which is the tone quality or, you know, we hear an instrument. How do we know what it is? What, how, when we hear it, how can we identify it? And when we see it, what do we see? And so with, with the kids, we broke down what they saw on the instruments, what shapes, because instruments are all made of different shapes. And so they broke down the instruments by shapes and then they got to create their own instruments using only shapes. They could cut out shapes, glue them together to kind of, it was very, um, you know, it, they didn't look like traditional instruments necessarily, but that's what I love. It's their interpretation using shapes. And so you're, they're learning so much in terms of, you know, what, what makes things sound the way they sound, what makes them look the way they look, why, is the key a circle? Why didn't they make it a square? Like what, what does that impact? Um, and so it really deepens their connection with that knowledge and they're having fun. And they get to put a piece of themselves in saying, create whatever instrument you want using shapes. And there's, there's you know, I wanna make sure they can identify the shapes and identify the instrument and tell me why they chose those shapes for that instrument but they put a piece of themselves. And I think that that's really what makes it magical and really makes that learning kind of stick for them because they're really, they have to connect and they have to really understand it. It's not a rote memorization, regurgitate answers. It's that hands-on um, application of their learning where they're also putting a little bit of themselves in it. That is great, I have to say. And I, I probably should have mentioned before, and you didn't mention it, uh, you collaborate with the Rock and Roll Foundation too. I do. I do a lot of work for um, with them, uh, the Rock and Roll Forever Foundation and Teach Rock. Yep. And actually, 
both of the lessons I talked about are Teach Rock lessons. The one I actually wrote for them. Um, and then the other one was one that they that they created. Um, but, you know, it's you can take a simple, this tube. Have you ever seen one of these? Yeah. It's called a boom whacker. And you can bang it on anything and it makes a sound. And I'll have the kids, they love, I mean, anyone from age, like they can hold one to age 90, 100, will put a smile on their face when playing a boom whacker. But there's so much depth in that we could talk about the length of the tubes and teaching sound waves and acoustics and and um, amplitude and all of these you know principles of sound and how they make them by comparing the length of tubes because every boom whacker is a different color and a different length. And so they can start to have that visual representation of, oh, when it's smaller, it makes a higher pitch and they can play it, hear it. They feel the vibrations themselves. Um, and like making those connections for them come alive. That's all science. That's math. Like simply in a fun plastic tube. That, I tell you, I'm enthusiastic. I, I think I should go to your class. You should uh, anytime. Come visit, hang okay. out, and have fun with us. Uh, how does it look in older grades? Maybe though, you know, uh, how would you integrate it there? So I started out, uh, and actually, um, I, I will give a little plug in my book, Integrating STEM with Music. Um, and so I will say, the core of that. This, when I wrote this book for Oxford University Press came out of my time as a middle school music technology STEAM um, teacher. And so taking those lessons, and we know that the standards in education scaffold. What they learn in kindergarten builds throughout their learning and it evolves till they become a senior in high school. And so when what I found was really important when my co-author Zach, who's a teacher in East Brunswick, New Jersey, when we wrote this book was that because the, we don't, again, the grades don't live in silos. Our standards don't stop at the end of second grade and they completely change in third grade. They build. We felt it important that all of the lessons that we include have variations for every grade level. So by taking grade band chunks like K to two, three to five, six to eight, nine to 12, and creating lessons in each of those, but then offering suggestions in the K to two lessons how could this lesson exist in three to five, in six to eight, in nine to 12? And because those standards follow the kids, they just evolve. And so the lesson, the core of it just evolves to the appropriate grade level and the abilities of the students. And so a lesson like with these boom whackers, instead of visually, the kids may be actually physically measuring finding out what is the ratio to get each pitch? What does the length have to be to get the proper pitch compared to the frequency and the amplitude you need of the sound wave? Um, you know, they may be creating a fretboard of a guitar and they need you to do mathematical calculations to figure out where are the frets placed? What is that mathematical formula to know where they are to get each pitch? And then how do they go about it? Or they might be coding in songs to then play through scratch or using makey makeys. Um, they may be taking, listening to bird calls, the sounds of birds. Every bird has a very specific sound that it makes, right? A little melody. Mm -hmm. And so by analyzing that and pulling in noise pollution and how that affects ecology and having a lesson surrounding the sounds that we hear and the impact of the sounds on an environment. Okay, uh, this is great stuff. Um, so you're integrating this stuff. What were your colleagues first when you first came? It was like, who's this crazy music teacher? Uh, well, they still may be saying that. I'm not sure, but uh, uh, Listen, so we're, we're all a little crazy in some way, shape, or form. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so anyway, what, how did your colleagues react when you're trying to? You know, a lot of people. I've been teaching this for a long time and now you come in and say, well, can we do this together? You know, it's a mix, it's mixed emotions. Like anything in education, you're never gonna get a hundred percent probably. There's always gonna be, and that's because we're all different and we all bring different things to the table. And so um, I kind of coined the term differentiated collaboration because just like we differentiate our instruction for our students in our classrooms, how I collaborate with my colleagues is different depending on who they are. What do they bring to the table? What are their needs? Um, and how comfortable are they? 
some it's it takes longer to convince them to win them over. Um, you know, in my how I worked it was the ones that were super excited and open to anything, I latched on to and we just tried stuff and and we were okay with this isn't gonna go perfect, or maybe we don't know where it's gonna go, but with the kids, we're gonna figure it out. Those were some of the most beautiful moments and beautiful learning experiences for the students. Um and then others, it takes a little longer. So if you start with people that are excited and are willing to collaborate, and then let the kids go off and talk about how great it was. And then slowly people will be like, oh, wait, what's going on? What'd you do? Oh, that might, could we try that? And, and you kind of build upon there. It's like any culture and climate within your school. You have to start somewhere and build from the positive of what you have. And then when there are people that are hesitant, try to find something in common. And it might be something as simple as we both love the same rock band. Well, then let's find a way to like connect through that. Um, some lessons have come out of a teacher coming to me, science teacher being like, I'm tone deaf. And I, I had this thing about teaching sound waves because it's related to music and I never felt comfortable. Could you, could we do it together? And then all of a sudden it became her favorite lesson because now she felt more comfortable because I was supporting her and we were doing it together. And then she was good to run off on her own with it. And so you have to meet people where they are and don't place unnecessary expectations on them and know that not everybody might jump at first. Um, and that it, it is, it's work just like with our kids, we have to work to get them to learn and to differentiate and meet all their needs. It's the same within our schools. So I, I think that over time, there's some that's still like, mm, but they'll, they'll, they'll appease me and, and try things and because they know the kids love it. And so you can make it as simple as you want. It doesn't have to, this, what it shouldn't be is shut down the world for a week because we're doing this special STEAM or STEM lesson. It should just be, you're already teaching these standards how can we just approach it from a different angle? Instead of taking the bus we always took to get there, here's how we teach this lesson, we're gonna take the train or maybe we'll walk or take a bike. And that's what bringing in the arts does. It just gives us a different way to approach the material we're already teaching. So it shouldn't take more time or less time. It's just a different way to approach it. I love this. And I, I was originally gonna ask you, what do the kids think? But I'm sure the kids love it. But do they realize it's what they're learning sometimes that it's that the music that you're teaching them is really science or mathematics or something? That, do they kind they of do, realize that? They do because I make sure they I make sure they do. Like I ask questions that get them to realize it, you know, because I think as the teacher, that's our job. They need to also understand how these connections are made and what they really are. Um, and I think it's important to note when you're gonna do, when you're gonna bring and integrate contents together, you first have to teach the things separately. So my kids, I'm not having them analyze shapes and instruments without me, one, already having taught them a, a, some basics about instruments, and two, they've been introduced to shapes in their classroom because then we can bring them together. And that's really important, a, a piece of it. They've gotta have foundational knowledge before we move them up the Bloom's taxonomy ladder to be creating and analyzing and evaluating and, and doing these amazing things through the integration. Okay, my, uh, my last question, because um, I love everything that you're doing in the classroom. And um, how would you um, uh, say a young music teacher comes up to you or maybe even a teacher in another subject who's interested in doing this, what advice would you give? And you kind of touched on some of the things earlier in the, in your remarks, but what advice would you give to a, a, a young music teacher saying, I wanna try some of this, how should I go about doing it? Start small, start small. What are you comfortable with? Find, what do you wanna reinvent? What, what do you teach that you think will naturally connect to something to another content area? And then just try it with one class. And if it goes well, do it with another class. And then once you're comfortable, try different topic or concept that you can bring together. And don't be afraid to ask for help. I do not profess to be an expert in everything. I have really good friends. Like I've done my homework and I know, you know, I know the foundational and the basics and I know a lot, I, I do, I've done the research, but I also have go-to, I have a go-to science person, a go-to social studies, a go-to math. I am not afraid to ask for help. 
hey, just the other day I was doing something with kindergarten. I'm like, I'm not sure if this is going to work. What do you think about? And the teacher was able to like, yeah, you're right. That probably won't go really well. I think this route and maybe do this, that and the other. So I think that not having too much pride that we know everything, being willing to show like we are also lifelong learners as educators. I'm also willing to tell my kids, I'm not sure if they ask me a question, I don't know. I'm honest. And so I think that having that honesty and having that willingness to ask for help when we need it or assistance when we don't have all the answers is really important. And that's how you build relationships. Because now that teacher, she and I do things all, all the time together because we're always bouncing ideas and asking each other our thoughts or would you think this will work? Or I, my kids are struggling with this. Do you think there's a way in music you might be able to approach it? Absolutely. So it's building that camaraderie and that, um, you know, a team, really. Build your team. Build your team. Okay. Uh, that brings us to the end of this Education Matters. Shauna, I have to thank you. Uh, your enthusiasm comes out. Uh, and I'm sure your kids and your colleagues uh, all see it. Uh, and they all learn from it, too, as a matter of fact. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, conversation about integrating the arts, music with STEM. It's something that we sometimes we don't do enough of.